everyone, it's Haley. Today I'm going to be doing a book haul that I know I've said this a lot recently that it's the biggest book haul I've ever done, but literally I think this is actually for sure the biggest book haul I have ever done because there are 64 books that I have to haul in this single freaking video. Oh my god, just roll the intro. <laughs> I think the most like worrisome part of this is that I just did a giant book haul. I did a huge book haul with 2020 new releases and there were probably 40 or so books in that video. I don't actually know. Maybe if I'm not lazy I'll go and count. But yeah, basically I deal with bad mental health by buying things and this has been accumulated since like February. I have some books that I got at the beginning of the year. There's a thunderstorm rolling in so like this might be an exciting video in more ways than one but the also worrisome part is that I still have books coming in like I have pre-orders and stuff that are coming in and chapters hit me with a 20% off coupon so like obviously I ordered some books like hmm I have a problem I'm very much aware of it it's fine is it I don't know but yeah now part of this book haul did come from another video that I had filmed that you guys have never seen and won't ever see. I did a come book shopping with me online video because I did a come book shopping with me video before and you guys really liked it and I had fun doing it but now I can only do it online obviously because of quarantine and stuff and to be safe so I did it online but then one of the companies that I shopped with in that video I had already ordered all of this stuff and that was my final order from them because they said some very questionable things I'm referring to Book Outlet and that whole thing. I talked about it in my last book haul, but basically their response to the lack of diversity in their Vlogger Friends program, which I used to be a part of, but I'm no longer. I don't support the company anymore. It was not good. Like they said, they were looking for family friendly creators and it just, it was not nice. I talked about it more in that video and I feel like I'm more articulate there. So I'll link that down below for you guys, but I was not okay with how they responded to that. So yeah. I am just including the books in this haul because I have them. I couldn't really return them or anything and I mean I do want to read them. So I'm not going to make this intro any longer because we have so many books to talk about that if I talk about each book for even one minute this video will be more than an hour long so let's just dive into it. I have a pretty hefty pile of classics that I'm going to save for the end of the video because I'll be able to go through those really quickly. I'm just going to kind of show them to you. So I'm just going to start off with the three giant piles that I have over here. I feel like I should show you. You can't even really see the bottom of them but that is what we have going on right now. That's why I've been procrastinating on filming this video and I'm scared. So I'm not going to organize this video in any way other than just picking up these books because I think that's going to be the easiest for me but it's gonna be a little chaotic for you but would we be on my channel if it wasn't? So the first book is 13 Doorways and Wolves Behind Them All by Laura Ruby. This book has been on my radar for a while now. It is the author of Bone Gap and this one is actually a historical fiction. So the synopsis kind of confuses me because there's a girl who's living and a girl who's dead and I think it's set during the Great Depression but it wasn't exactly clear so I don't know who's dead and who's living. I know that the one girl, her and her sister I believe, are abandoned by their father and I've heard some pretty good things about it. It is a National Book Award finalist, which I find the National Book Award books that I've read so far I have really enjoyed. So fingers crossed that this one I will also like. I still need to read Bone Gap though, so I've never read anything by this author. But given how much I've been loving historical fiction recently, I think I will probably really enjoy this one. I'm trying to figure out where to put the books once I'm done talking about them because I need to do the thumbnail after, but I don't know what to do. Next up is Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson. I've never read a Tiffany D. Jackson book before but I have heard some really amazing things about it and particularly about this one and I have been really interested in it so I'm super happy to have it now. So this follows the main character who has been wrongfully convicted of killing a baby by a jury and a judge when she can't really say anything to speak up for herself. So she ends up going to a juvie and she spends a really long time there before she is shuffled into a group home. Obviously this isn't going to be the easiest read. It's going to be really heavy but I love books that deal with more important topics that teach me something because I think that's exactly what books are for so I think that this one will be a great one for that. Next is Want by Cindy Pond. So this is a sci-fi which I don't generally pick up but I think the concept for this one sounds super intriguing and it really like 
I don't know why, but my boyfriend plays a lot of kind of sci-fi video games, and for some reason the premise of this reminds me of them. I honestly can't really explain it. But it's a pretty interesting concept that I feel like is pretty relevant and timely. So there's a lot of pollution plaguing this city, and there are these suits that can protect you from all the pollution and the viruses that are around, but they're so expensive that only the elite and wealthy can afford them, which obviously is very problematic. So the main character Zhu infiltrates the society to try and figure out what's going on and to defeat the corruption from within, but she kind of realizes that there's a lot more corruption than even she or the public in general realized. I think this is going to be a really good book. I'm like super excited about the concept, which doesn't happen for me a lot with sci-fi, so I will probably read it soon. Also, which doesn't happen for me a lot with sci-fi, so I'll probably read it soon. Also, it totally matches my shirt, which like you can't really see, but it's like iridescent and it matches it very well. So fun. Next is 4321 by Courtney Stevens. I think I had an arc of this at some point and I can't remember if I unhauled it or if it's out in the garage at my parents house but if it is like I haven't dealt with those books yet. So yeah anyways long story short I bought a copy of it for myself. This is all about a girl who reunites with the three other survivors of a bus bombing that they were in that killed 18 other people. So it's set a year later and I don't know if it's like reliving that or what exactly happens but I know that once again sounds like more of an emotional and heavy contemporary which I've read quite a few of but I tend to enjoy so I mean enjoy like you know enjoy in a way that it makes me think and I feel like this one will probably be a similar sort of thing. Next is The How and the Why by Cynthia Hand. I actually thought I had already hauled this so I had it downstairs so it's actually 65 books that we're hauling today. <laughs> Yikes. This is kind of again a more emotional intense contemporary so it's about a girl who was adopted and she lives the perfect life. She's very happy with her adoptive family. However, she does wonder where she came from. So it's told alternating between her discovering her identity and trying to find who her mother is and letters from her actual mother. And I'm very intrigued by that format. I included it on my TBR for this month actually. So fingers crossed I will be able to actually get to it. Next is We Set the Dark on Fire by Taylor K. Mejia. This is set at a school for girls where the students are trained to either raise their husband's children or run his household. And Daniela is this school's top student, but she's hiding a secret. Her parents actually forged identification papers for her to rise above her station, hopefully. Obviously, she has to keep this secret, and that's what the plot of this one is. And it also is a sapphic romance, and I feel like I've heard amazing things when this one came out, and I believe the sequel is already out too. I can't quite remember, but oh, it looks like she joins a resistance group. This synopsis is way longer than the Goodreads one, which basically just said like what I told you, but it looks like she actually joins a resistance group that's desperately fighting to bring equality. Ooh, that sounds fun. I'm excited. Next, I have two books by the same author, and that is Brandy Colbert. So I have Finding Yvonne and Little and Lion. I'll start off by talking about Little and Lion. So this is about Suzette, who comes home from boarding school in LA, and she's not sure if she will ever be able to go back because her brother has recently been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So she's trying to settle back into her old life. However, she also finds that she is falling for the same girl that her brother is in love with. Obviously, that's going to be a big, big problem. Once again, a book I've heard some great things about. And then Finding Yvonne, this one. This one is obviously about Yvonne, who is a violinist. She's very passionate about her music and has been ever since her mother walked out on their family when she was young. But now she's starting to feel self-conscious about her violining skills. Is that a verb? I don't know, but I just made it one. So she's starting to worry that she's not good enough to actually make it as a violinist. And she ends up striking up a relationship with a street musician who relates to her and shares and understands her struggles. But she also ends up unexpectedly pregnant and that definitely is going to add a lot more to her plate that is already pretty full. Brandy Colbert also has a new book that's out, The Voting Booth. I'm not sure if it's out yet or if it's coming out very soon, but I've seen it around a lot and I will probably pick up that one as well. Next is You Say It First by Katie Catugno. So this deals with a character who has the perfect life. She has everything set out for her, but she also works for a voter registration call center and one of those calls ends up connecting her with a boy and I think that's where the romance starts blossoming. I'm not really sure about this one to be honest. Like that sounds kind of strange, but 
I don't know. I guess we'll see. I might have to look a little bit more into the reviews and see how I actually feel about it, but it's definitely an interesting concept. Next is This Song Will Save Your Life by Leela Sales. So I picked this one up and this was not the cover that I was expecting. I'm not a fan of this cover at all, but oh well, it's what's inside that counts. I kind of picked up this book not really knowing anything about it just because I've heard so many great things about it. I feel like a lot of people who have read this one, it's kind of like one of those under the radar favorites and that intrigued me. It's about a girl who has always wanted to be popular in her last ditch effort it fails but then she meets this girl at a party who loves DJing and she like I don't know I guess that's her key to popularity I'm not really sure I thought that it dealt with a little bit more heavy subject matter like depression and such but I don't know if I just made that up so I guess I'll start reading it and find out next is the library of the unwritten by AJ Hackwith I have kind of like a lot of these books are ones that I, I've seen around a lot and I've been intrigued by but I finally decided to buy them. So this one is definitely one I saw it all over the place and I didn't know what it was about but once I read the synopsis I was totally hooked and it immediately like skyrocketed to the top of my wish list. It is the Hell's Library series so Claire is the head librarian of the unwritten wing of Hell's Library which is where all these unwritten and unfinished stories it's neutral zone for the characters to hang out in like that's such a cool concept but in this book one of those heroes ends up escaping and that obviously is going to be really interesting I'm so so intrigued by this one I feel like once I ease myself back into fantasy I'll probably be picking this one up pretty soon. Next is Calling My Name by Liera Tamani. This is about the main character who is starting to kind of feel left behind as her friends progress and start experiencing life, but she is always played by the rules and held back because of her conservative African-American family. She has just kind of paid attention to all of those rules set for her and it's worked out for her. However, when she falls in love for the first time, everything absolutely changes. So this is kind of I guess like how a love story can change everything and I love this cover. I think it is so so beautiful and I'm looking forward to learning more about this character. I think it's going to be really character driven which I always tend to love. Next is The Bookworm Crush by Lisa Brown Roberts. I actually thought this was adult but I'm pretty sure it's YA and it is a spin-off of another book that I don't plan on reading. Maybe if I like this one I will read it though but I think this one intrigues me more because it deals with like books so I like books in case you didn't know that. <laughs> what? Breaking news. But it's all about this girl who has the chance to interview her favorite author who has been completely reclusive like hasn't let anyone talk to her in years and years and years and it's this competition that she has to enter and she needs a competition coach and of course it ends up being the guy she has been seriously crushing on for a very long time. I think this is going to be a fun and cute literary romance which I always love. Next is the there's Something About Sweetie by Sandhya Manan. I have read two Sandhya Manan books. I have read her first one, When Dimple Met Rishi, and then I read, oh, what is it called? Uh, From Twinkle with Love, and I wasn't as big of a fan of that one as I was of her first one. However, I do now have all of them because I also have Of Curses, is it Of Curses and Kisses? Yes, Of Curses and Kisses. That's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And then I also have the, oh my gosh, I can't think of anything. There's Something About Pinky. I'm sorry that I'm struggling with all the book titles right now. But this book follows Ashish who has been dumped by his ex and his parents think that they can find him someone better. They are absolutely sure of it. So he challenges them to set him up. Now it also follows Sweetie who is a track athlete. She loves running track and she also is fat. Her parents absolutely hate the fact that she is plus sized and both her and Ashish have something to prove so I think they're going to team up together and that sounds awesome. Next is Wait For Me by Caroline Leach. So this is a World War II historical fiction that is set in Scotland. Lorna, the main character, is living on her father's farmland and then this German prisoner of war is brought there and she's absolutely appalled but then she starts getting to know him. This was two dollars which is kind of why I bought it and like since I've been loving historical fiction I was like why not? So that's that's basically how I 
got my hands on this one. Next is What to Say Next by Julie Bobom. This one has a very vague synopsis, but I know I've heard some good things about this author. So it's about two teens who have been struggling and find each other when they need it most. That's pretty much what I got from the synopsis on Goodreads. It does deal with a popular and a more socially isolated kid, so it is kind of like the two worlds colliding there, but they both need a connection and I'm assuming they find it in each other, so I think that will be an interesting relationship. It is blurbed by Nicola Yoon and I totally trust her. I've really liked her books, so I hope that I'll like this one too. Next is 10 Things We Did and Probably Shouldn't Have by Sarah Mlynowski. This is by the author of I See London, I See France, which is one of my favorite favorite European travel books. It's so fun. I really liked it a lot. And that's kind of why I picked this one up because it's not generally something I would have gravitated towards, but knowing that I liked her other books so much, I was like, I'll give this one a shot. This follows 16 year old April who has lied to her dad so she can be parent free with her best friend for the summer, which is like, yeah, I can, I can already tell that that's going to be a recipe for disaster. If I was parent free for a summer when I was 16, my house would have burned down. It would have been bad. Next is Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. This follows an HIV positive teen who is moving to a new school and she is hoping to start fresh, but she doesn't want her status to get out because last time it did, it went very wrong and that's why she's at a new school. But she starts forming a relationship with a guy and then she finds an anonymous note in her locker threatening to expose her status if she doesn't tell him by a certain date. So she has a deadline within which she has to tell him. I think this is kind of going to be kind of like Felix Ever After is what it makes me think of a little bit. I think just like the school drama and revealing something that really isn't anyone else's business. So I'm hoping I enjoy this book as much as everyone else seems to because I have heard some really awesome things about it. Next is This Is What It Feels Like by Rebecca Barrow. This is a sapphic romance actually and it is about music as well. So Dia used to be in a band with her friends, but then drinking starts to take over one of her friends' lives and she feels like her dream of opening for one of her favorite bands is out of her grasp now. She thought that she may have had a chance of winning the grand prize at this competition and doing that and just having her dream come true, but with her friends struggling, it seems totally out of grasp. I feel like friendship, romance, and music are going to be central topics of this story and while I'm not like generally a huge music fan, I do like really reading about it because I feel like just the passion in it I really enjoy it so I think that this one should be good. That was so weird. I don't know why it was so weird. I'm sorry. Speaking of music that makes me think of dance and art and all of that and I have been reading a lot of books about dance recently. I don't know why it just kind of has been happening but I have another one here and that is I Want to Be Where You Are by Christina Forrest. This cover is so beautiful. It's so cute. I love it a lot and oh my gosh I I love the color scheme and everything. It is beautiful. This follows Chloe who wants to apply for the dance conservatory of her dreams but her mom has banned her from doing so but she decides that she doesn't care and she's just going to go and she ends up having to take along her annoying neighbor because he catches her and he threatens to expose her if she doesn't let him tag along because they're going pretty far for the nearest audition for this dance conservatory and also his dog is there like I really like road trip books and like I said, dance books, I've been having a lot of fun with them recently. I did dance for a very long time when I was a kid, so I find them like a little bit relatable. Obviously, it's a bit more intense in the books that I'm reading, but I think that this is going to be a lot of fun and I'm really excited for it. Next is The Great Unknowable End by Katherine Ormsby. This is another case where the book was very inexpensive and that's kind of why I bought it. It's super weird though. It's a historical fiction, but not the typical one. I usually read World War II historical fictions or like World War I historical fictions. I like reading all kinds of historical fictions, but those are generally the ones you find the most of. But this one is set in like the 70s, 60s. I'm not good with the 1900s decades that are more recent, but I think it's like the 60s because it's set at a hippie commune. So it's a girl who dreams of being a space engineer and a boy who is living with Tourette's in this hippie commune and they they have this magical element to the story too. Like I have no clue what's gonna happen in this book, but like 
I'm definitely very interested because it's a really strange concept. Next is Hello, Goodbye, and Everything in Between by Jennifer E. Smith. I've read only two of her books before, I believe. I don't think there's any others that I can think of, but I enjoyed The Geography of You and Me, but then I read The Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight, and that one I was just okay on, so I kind of have mixed feelings on her stuff. I'm a little bit all over the place, but I decided to give this one a chance because I was looking to fill my shelves with some more fluffy YA contemporary, which is why you'll notice that there is quite a bit in this book haul. I do really like the concept for this one though. So it follows Claire and Aiden who are in a relationship, but they are about to leave for college. So it's actually set in the 12 hours the night before they are going to leave for college and go their separate ways at college. And they have to decide whether they're going to stay together and do long distance, or if they're going to break up and go their own ways entirely. So over these 12 hours, they're retracing their relationship. So I think it's going to be like flashbacks, but also present day. And I just think that that sounds like a very well-rounded story. Definitely probably a relatable issue for a lot of people who dated in high school. I didn't really date in high school, so I didn't have that issue. But I can see how that would be a very stressful and big problem because long distance, like, no could not do. Next I have another couple of books by the same author and that author is Kat Winters. So I have The Cure for Dreaming and Odd and True. Her stories are more like kind of October reads for me. I mean the covers kind of give you those creepy vibes. I've only read one other of her books that was In the Shadow of Blackbirds which was a World War One historical fiction but I definitely have wanted to pick up more and I do have one on my TBR. I have The Steep and Thorny Way. So The Cure for Dreaming is set in 1900 and it deals with suffragettes which sounds awesome. And then Odd and True. This one is set in 1909 and True's sister always told her these stories of her mother slaying these monsters that she always assumed were just to make her feel better about the fact that she is permanently disabled because of a childhood battling polio. Now when her sister reappears and promises her to save her from the monsters that are on her way to attack her, she realizes that it might not have been so false. It was probably very true. So both of these are really weird concepts. Like this one does also have a sort of magical element. It's with a mesmerist or hypnotist and the main character ends up with the ability to see people's true natures after seeing this mesmerist and I feel like both of these like they're kind of creepy but really cool at the same time and she definitely has a grasp for that historical era like the World War One era. That's actually when In the Shadow of Blackbirds is also set so I'm excited to read these probably around October. Next are another two books by the same author and that author this time is Jen Bennett. I have read two Jen Bennett books this year but I've read three total so I've kind of been slowly filling my collection. I didn't realize that this one was by her. I did have an arc of it but it's a fantasy book which is why I didn't realize it. So it's about a girl who has always wanted to go treasure hunting with her father, but she's never given the chance to. He has an intern who does that, but then the intern ends up returning without him. He has gone missing and she has to go with him to try and find him. And they find out that he was tracking a ring that belonged to Dracula once. So very intrigued. And Serious Moonlight on the other hand. This is about Bertie and Daniel who are forced to work together at this mysterious hotel where this mysterious author lives her mysteriously secluded life. This is kind of more like what I've read by Jen Bennett but she writes some really well-rounded contemporaries and the characters have very interesting hobbies and I have really enjoyed them so I'll probably like both of these I'm assuming because I do like her writing. Next is The Good Luck Girls by Charlotte Nicole Davis. This is described as a mix of the Handmaid's Tale meets Westworld. I haven't read The Handmaid's Tale yet, which is just a running theme for my life because I keep saying I have to read it. And I also haven't seen Westworld because I'm not really into TV. I know it's weird. I'm not really into TV movies or music. Like I, I'm strange. What else can I say? But when I do watch TV, I like watching like funny things like Schitt's Creek. So I just, I don't know. Anyways, this is a Western family and it is about queer girls. And these good luck girls are sold to Welcome House as children and branded with a mark and stuck in the life that they didn't choose. I'm kind of like I know the concept for The Handmaid's Tale so I'm definitely getting those vibes and Westworld I kind of know like a teeny tiny little bit about so I understand how it seems to be a combination of the both of those and this cover is once again so so beautiful and I feel like this could be real interesting. Sisters by Chance, Outlaws by Choice, Aster the Protector, Violet the Favorite, Tansy the Medic, Mallow the Fighter, Clementine the Catalyst. It's going to take more than luck for them all to survive. 
I love that. That definitely has me hooked. Next is a book that came as a surprise in the mail and it was like the best surprise ever and that is Smash It by Francina Simone. I'm so excited to have this book. If you guys don't know, Francina is also a booktuber. You should definitely check her out and definitely check out her new book which is coming out soon. It comes out in September. That is like literally so soon. So September 22nd, you can get your copy of this. I cannot wait for it. It is an Othello retelling and it deals with one of my favorite tropes which is having like a list of things to do and it's her effort list and I'm so looking forward to seeing this character live just check mark off all those things on it I think this is going to be great knowing Francina it's going to be amazing Francina is just amazing in general so definitely check out her channel and don't forget to check out smash it too because I'm so excited for it also once again beautiful cover there are so many beautiful covers in this book haul next is a book that I've actually already read and it is let's talk about love by Claire Kahn this is about Alice who is a sexual and bi-romantic and she is in university which is a nice change because I feel like a lot of books you know they're high school age so I always really love when books are set at a bit of a higher age. So at the beginning of the book her girlfriend breaks up with her because she doesn't understand her asexuality. Alice hasn't come out to her and she just doesn't really get it. Alice is comfortable with who she is but she's trying to figure out how to come out to other people and be accepted by other people. She worries about finding love especially because she's starting to fall for her co-worker. I liked this book. I had a good time reading it. I'll talk about it more in a recent reads video, but I thought it was good. Next is Black Girl Unlimited by Echo Brown. I will repeat myself again. This cover is gorgeous. I love it, but this is actually part memoir. So it's an autobiographical story, which I didn't know, but it also is a little bit of an urban fantasy, which sounds really cool. So it's about a girl who's living in two worlds, the world that she actually lives in, like her neighborhood. And then she goes to school in a completely different neighborhood. And it kind of makes me think of the hate you give in a way with that, but it's a mix between East side and West side of New York where she's living. And it's her trying to navigate that. So I I haven't really I feel like I've read more kind of nonfiction like this is an entirely nonfiction but I've read more memoirs and stuff like that recently than I ever have before and I've been liking them a lot so I feel like this one has a good chance of me enjoying it especially if it's anything like this cover because like it is gorgeous. I can't remember if I got this one before I filmed my last book haul but I feel like the synopsis seems kind of familiar to me and it's not in my list of books to haul but I will just quickly say I got Sisters of Sword and Song by Rebecca Ross and yeah I, I'm pretty sure I hauled it if not I will include it again in a next book haul. Next is Not Like the Movies by Carrie Winfrey so this is an adult romance and I know there's another book by this author but I didn't pick it up just because I'm like I said not super into movies but I think this one was on sale a lot and I just decided to go for it so here it is. The other one the title has something to do with Tom Hanks, Waiting for Tom Hanks. So as I'm reading synopsis it deals with a character whose father has early onset Alzheimer's and I have read so many books recently where characters parents have early onset Alzheimer's. I don't know what it is. I've never read one before but I've read like three and this would be the fourth this year. It's just very strange how like sometimes a certain thing I'll read about in a book and then I read a bunch of them in a row. I don't know. But her best friend wrote a rom-com that's about to premiere in theaters and it is inspired by Chloe and her cute but no-nonsense boss Nick Velez. Okay that sounds really good. I'm excited. Next is The Fascinators by Andrew Eliopoulos and we are coming to the part of the pile that I don't have a synopsis for because they're mostly 2020 releases that I got after I had filmed that last video so I apologize. This one I know was on sale for Pride Month so it is a queer story. I'm not sure exactly how but it has a magical element to it and it is a small town where magic is frowned upon and Sam and his two best friends they have a magic club where they practice magic but as senior year comes their group is starting to kind of fall apart. Sam is falling in love with his friend James who may or may not be having a crush on a girl from his church. There's also a magic college. Ooh, I'm intrigued by this. Oh and there's a cute new guy who joins the club. I love the mix of magic and also a queer romance in here so I feel like I've been gravitating towards books that are contemporary but have that magical element and this one is definitely that. Next is Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is a companion novel. It's going to be a series. I'm pretty sure a trilogy but the first book is Get a Life Chloe Brown which is on my TBR for this month. I've been dying to read it so I haven't looked at anything about what this book is about. I know that the trilogy 
I'm pretty sure a trilogy is going to follow each of the sisters and I just love that. I know this one has generalized anxiety disorder representation in it and I have heard nothing but great things about both of these books so I can't wait to read them. Next is a book that I actually finished today and that is Love Boat Taipei by Abigail Hing Wen. This follows Ever who thinks that she is being sent to Taipei to this school that is going to be very strict but it's actually basically a summer long party. Now she has a passion for dance and she wants to be a dancer but she's also trying to meet her parents expectations and it's essentially a story about her discovering her identity and melding the two and figuring out who she is as a Chinese American. And by melding the two I mean like trying to meet her parents expectations while also doing what she wants to do and following her heart. It was really good, I liked it a lot and once again I'll talk about it more in a recent reads video. Next is another adult romance and that is Paris is Always a Good Idea by Jen Mc McKinley. This is another book that I just kind of like ordered on a whim because it was on sale. It's about a 30 year old woman who retraces her gap year through Ireland, France, and Italy to find love and herself in this heartfelt and hilarious novel. That sounds fun. I love the fact that she's going back on her European trip. I would love to go back on my Europe trip. Oh my goodness, especially like now more than ever. I mean not like now, but if things were fine then now more than ever. We all know I love a good travel book so this sounds like it's right up my alley. Next is The Court of Miracles by Kester Grant. This is a fantastical Les Mis retelling which sounds so great. It's a mix, what was described as, a mix of the Jungle Book and Les Mis, which I like, I don't understand how the two are going to mesh, but like definitely has me super, super interested. I don't know if you can hear this rain because like the drops are very big, but I'm like thinking that this is probably going to be a big storm. So I really hope the power stays and I'm sorry if you can hear the rain, but I can't really do anything about that. But the next book is This is Kind of an Epic Love Story by Kaysen Callender. I read Felix Ever After by them and I loved it. It was such a good story and I realized that so much of why I loved it is because of how they built up character and their writing was so good. So I had had an arc of this one at one point and I think it might be also out in the garage at my parents house but it was on sale for Pride Month so I decided to pick up a paperback copy of it. Next is Ink Mistress by Audrey Coulthurst, another one that I had the arc of but it's definitely out in the garage at my parents house. I have so many books out there that like I want to read but I just kept them there so that's gonna be fun to go through but this one was also on sale for Pride Month because it is a sapphic romance. I read Of Fire and Stars by the same author and this is set in the same universe. It's actually a prequel. So the main character is actually a demigod and she has the ability to dictate the future by writing with her blood. That is so intriguing to me. I'm really excited to get back into this world because of Fire and Stars was super sweet. I liked it a lot so I think I will also like this one. Next is Buried Beneath the Baobab Tree by Adobe Trisha Noalbani. This is set in 2014 when Boko Haram kidnapped 276 girls and some managed to escape but a lot of them are still missing and others didn't even survive. It follows a girl who has big dreams but her village is attacked by Boko Haram and her best friend and her are both kidnapped and she watches as her best friend starts to submit to the captor when she still wants to fight. This is definitely going to be a very difficult read but I think it is important to read especially because it is recent history and something that I should know more about so I will have to be in the right mindset for it but I think that it will be very educational once I do read it. Next is Maybe This Time by Casey West. Casey West is another author that I kind of have a love-hate relationship with but this book sounds so so good so it is one year nine events nine chances to fall in love. It's about a girl who works as a florist and then the son of a chef and they end up meeting at these nine events. They meet at events all the time because like weddings and stuff they're both hired often for the same things and over the course of this year they fall in love and I think that sounds so cute and definitely perfect for summertime. Next is Stay Sweet by Siobhan Vivian. This is all about this ice cream stand that has been open since World War II and it has always been run by the local girls in their town and Amelia and her best friend Kate are working there but then the founder ends up dying and her 
grandnephew shows up and wants to change some things. This is once again going to be kind of a cuter sort of summary romance, definitely the sort of fluffy book that I was looking for. Next is Seven Days of You by Cecilia Vanessa. Sophie has seven days left in Tokyo where she has been living until she moves back with her family to the US and she has the perfect seven days planned until her ex shows up and kind of ruins everything but also I feel like doesn't really ruin everything especially because the cover says a second chance at first love. I don't think I've read another book that's set in Tokyo at least not a contemporary. I've read a fantasy I believe that's set in Japan and I can't remember if it was in Tokyo but I feel like this is traveling to a new place in this book and that sounds awesome. Next is Learning to Breathe by Janice Lynn Mather. This is about a girl who is 16 and she is going to live with distant relatives and while she's there she is hiding a big secret because she is trying to conceal a pregnancy. She stumbles upon a yoga retreat and she's desperate to find somewhere to call home and she thinks she's finally found it but she also discovers that home is a lot more than just four walls and a roof and it's more the people that you're with so I think she's going to find a good support system and I'm looking forward to reading about that. Next is The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord. This follows a girl whose boyfriend died in a tragic accident a year ago and she's finally ready to return to high school and return to normalcy and she plans on getting her old boyfriend back to try and convince everyone that she's back to normal which I'm figuring isn't going to go well because obviously she's not going to get over a loss like that within a year. So once again, kind of expecting an emotional contemporary, but also I think this one might be a little bit on the lighter side in a way at the same time. I know grief is going to be a central topic, but I don't really know how to describe like what I'm expecting from this one, but I do love this new cover and actually a sequel came out, I believe, or at least a companion came out recently, the map from here to there. So I will see if I like this one. Oh, she makes a plan. It's like a list thing again. I love that. I love lists. Next is Blood Rose Rebellion by Rosalind Eves. This book I get recommended a lot because it's a Victorian fantasy sort of thing and those are two things that I really like. So this one deals with blood magic. So your social prestige comes from money, magic, and blood very interesting. And the main character is barred from society because she has a defect in her blood and is unable to perform magic. So to come out into the world you have to do like this debutante spell and she accidentally breaks her sister's spell and ends up being exiled to Hungary. So this is set in Hungary. I have a lot of books here that are set in interesting different places that I've never read about which I'm super pumped about. Next is I'm Not Dying With You Tonight by Kimberly Jones and Jilly Seagull. This follows two teen girls, one black and one white, who must confront racial inequality and their own assumptions about it as they stick together to try and survive the violent protests that are happening in their city. Obviously this is a very timely and important book and I'm very glad that I have it to add to my TBR. Next is The Looking Glass by Janet McNally which now that I'm rereading my notes on I realize also has to do with dance. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Particularly like ballet but also other forms of dance but like I've been reading a lot about ballerinas. I don't know. So the main character is Sylvie's older sister disappears and she ends up receiving a copy of an old storybook that she had renamed when they were kids but it also has a mysterious list inside so I don't really know what's going on about that but both of them are ballerinas and they're trying to carry on their legacy. Next is The Last Thing You Said by Sarah Byron. I asked you guys for a lot of recommendations for fluffy contemporaries and this is one that was recommended but it's totally not fluffy when you read the synopsis but I do still think that it will be a good story. It was recommended quite a bit. So Lucy and Ben were finally about to profess their love to each other but as they were about to do that their best friend and Ben's sister drowned behind them. So it's been a year and they were torn apart with grief and drifted apart entirely but now that it's the year anniversary of her death they come together again and obviously like that sounds real intense but I also do like those emotional contemporaries so I think I will still enjoy this one. And the final YA book that I have here, oh my goodness, and then I'll get to the classics real quick, but it is You'd Be Mine by Erin Hahn. This is about country music essentially and a girl who is making it big on YouTube with country music but then there's also this like 
rock star that wants to be with her and tour with her but he's like a bad boy and she does not want to get involved with that but he starts to win her over so that sounds like fun i have very artistic books in this haul i don't know so now super quickly for the classics so i picked up all of the seasons editions i only have these ones here because the rest of them my sisters had to get all over the world because if you haven't seen these yet they are super cool so this is the summer set they have the winter set that came out this past winter but these ones are the summer ones and essentially they are classics collector's editions because they only print 10,000 copies of each of them and they're actually like die cut like that like where you see the green cut out it's actually like that so for this round they have the adventures of huckleberry finn which is beautiful they also made the dust jackets thicker so you can actually keep it on to preserve the white part which is great then there is persuasion by jane austen here jane eyre by charlotte Bronte. These are just so beautiful. I'm obsessed with them. And then of course the Wonderland collection. I had to have this one by Lewis Carroll. Like definitely needed this. I also picked up some Barnes and Noble Classics editions which is how you can tell this book haul is old because I actually went to America to get these which was back in like February before anything started happening. So I got The Bell Jar and The Collected Poems by Sylvia Plath. Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. The Odyssey by Homer. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Heart of Darkness and Other Stories by Joseph Conrad, Persuasion by Jane Austen, Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, and The Awakening and Other Stories by Kate Chopin. And finally, finally, I have What Would Alice Do, which is just advice for the modern woman based on the original stories by Lewis Carroll. So it's just like a fun little advice book that I thought that I should have in my life. And I also got this book here, which is Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. So it has the classic novel with recipes for modern tea time treats by Martha Stewart. I think that sounds so fun, like a little literary cookbook. I actually picked up a couple more literary cookbooks that I'll include in my next haul, but it has like the whole text of the book, but also just some fun little recipes in here, like chocolate shortbread fingers. How fun is this? I love it. So that is all for the biggest book haul I have ever done and probably will do because I don't want to, I don't want to be like this anymore. I don't want to get to this point anymore. So I'm going to try and be better at like keeping up with book hauls and also just like not buying so many books. You know, that's a novel concept, pun entirely intended, but I hope you guys did enjoy this video. It, I'm so glad it's done. And now the big video I have to film is recent reads video because I have like 21 books to wrap up in recent reads and I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do that. So we'll see, but I hope you guys liked it and I will see you guys in my next video. Yep, that's how this is going. I will see you guys in my next video very soon. Bye.